Bookland, it is title time. Let's celebrate the players that helped you take home that hashtag Bookland title. Let's roast the players that maybe let you down. Either way, we have a good time on today's show. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Please subscribe. Click the bell. Leave us a comment and enjoy the show. While you sort out your 2022 budget, think about this. You can save 72% on restaurant-quality meals with HelloFresh, and you don't even need to hit the grocery store. Get 16 free meals plus three free gifts with code FOOTBALLERS16 at HelloFresh.com slash FOOTBALLERS16. And Clan, speaking of budgets, in this new Wild West where everything has a, a subscription, and you're like, oh, well, that's that's fine. I'll add that one in. I'll add that one in. Before you know it, you're up to like dozens of subs, and you don't even remember that you have them, mm -hmm. and you just keep getting charged. That's where Truebill comes into play. Truebill, it's a new app. They help you identify and stop paying for subs that you do not need, or you just forgot you had them. On average, people save up to $720 a year with Truebill, and because companies, they can make it difficult to cancel sometimes, Truebill makes it incredibly simple. Just link your account, and Truebill will cancel your unwanted subscriptions in one tap. I have been a long-term uh, user of Truebill. I love their sub. Like, they're a sub. I'm not canceling that no, sub because they take care of things for me. They are saving me cash every single month, clearing out those unwanted subscriptions do not fall for the subscription scam. Start canceling today at Truebill.com slash footballers. Go right now, Truebill.com slash footballers. It could save you thousands a year. Truebill.com slash footballers. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> welcome to the podcast. That's the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. If you are nasty, so nasty, it's Championship Monday. Look, I, I understand some of you out there, you need a Monday Night Miracle. But for a lot of people out there, the titles are flowing. Mm -hmm. Championships have been taken. Oh, yes, they have. <laughs> Oh, yes, they have. Or lost. Or yeah. lost. We have a group of people here. Certainly. Who were all in their own title games. We had uh, Andy was in our League of Record yes. title game. Unfortunately, he did not bring home the championship. He it did was not. a devastating, oh, devastating yeah. loss where he only needed a few points from Dalvin Cook. And it seemed like he was a champ. And Dalvin Cook said, I will give you fewer. That is what he said. He called Andy <laughs> right before the game. Well, it was a halftime and said, oh. it's not going to happen. And uh, our own judge, Brooks, was in the championship for Dynasty. And he had the superior roster. It did not come through. But, but somebody <laughs> won. <laughs> we won. We won. Yes, we did. I mean, you could say we're counting our chickens before they hatch because we could lose if uh, Deontay Johnson scores 50. Ain't happening. If he goes Jamar Chase. Yeah. Uh, you're a champ. I'm a champ. Back to back. Yes, back to back. Welcome into the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Congratulations to all the champions. Uh, we will be reflecting, of course, on yesterday. If you want to watch, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. Make sure you subscribe. Click the bell. If you want to follow us on the socials, let us know about that hashtag Foot Clan title. Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers over on Twitter. At the FF Ballers, at Jason FFL, at FF Hitman, and at Andy Holloway. Whew. It's Monday. Oh. It's Monday. You know that they're. You know the puns are coming in. They're coming in hot. Let's get sophisticated. Yes. I will kick us off, Jason. Okay. Amazing, Jace. <laughs> oh, you talking about? Jamar Chase. It's hard to sing over this music. Yes. Uh, whoa, Burrow. Oh, you talk about Joe Burrow. Oh my gosh. Oh, but Ty Week Hill. Mm hmm. With DeAndre Whiff. Oh, what was that all about, Guns yeah, Mahoney? Seriously, Dan. I'm on Raw Touchdown. Oh, Dalvin Undercook. Oh, Dalvin 
Salmonella. Salmonella. Oh, Pee Wee Lamb. Or Jalen Squattle. George Piddle. Oh, that's mean. Rash- Rashad Plenty. <laughs> and Ronald McDonald Jones. <laughs> Ronald McDonald Jones. That might be my favorite one ever. Oh man, that's uh that's that's uh that's a clown show. It was honestly, it was a fantastic Sunday. I get that, you know, half of you in the title games right now are feeling the sting of losing a championship and trust me, we've all been there. Mm-hmm. Understand it feels bad. But at least it was a fantastic weekend of football. This wasn't the uh you managed to survive, what was that, week 15, yeah, the, where it was just a, a crap show. It was like the the football, for the most part, was fantastic. The storylines were outrageous, uh, to say the least. And you had some great fantasy pro- producers yes. and, and really important ones. A lot of, um, you know underdog waiver wire type of players that really did come through for championship week um some guys that were uh you know you questioned you were him and Han, and if you made the right decision I mean you were you were rewarded and and of course all of those things are true in reverse uh, yeah certainly. for the opposite but yeah there was a lot of courage calls that came through in, in a big way oh, let's get into the news News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. Okay, so the headline news, uh, which was, I have, uh, I've never seen anything like this except for back like during the MTV days of Rock and Jock. Oh, sure, I remember that. Where the- like players would switch teams, and it was all just it was a celebrity uh, thing. Mid- and mid-game trade. It was real fun. But if you missed it somehow, Antonio Brown left Tampa Bay in the middle of the game. It was the third quarter. Uh, His team was losing. Yes, there was some type of scuffle. I don't like you had teammates talking to him, uh, seemingly pleading with him to just hang out and wait. He took off his shoulder pads. He put them down. Took off his undershirt. Threw it into the crowd. Walked off, did some jumping jacks in the middle of an end zone while the NFL was playing a football game. Yeah, and he he left. The the he, the, se- he left. The security looked like they were coming after him, thinking he was a streaker as he's taking his clothes off on the sideline. And it was it was unbelievable. You just you'd never seen anything like it. And that was a that was our first mid game retirement. Yes, and like no one had any idea what was happening. Uh, Twitter didn't know. Uh, the the announcers didn't know. I mean, watch it like the, the commentary from the red zone from uh, uh, Siciliano was just like, I I don't know what just happened. And now the day after, we still don't really right. know. I mean, there's there's a lot of there's, he dropped an album. So was this a publicity stunt? Yeah, plenty of rumors. I had heard uh, the argument was he. Felt like he wasn't health, actually healthy enough to go. The team was pushing him to go. Do not know. Uh, Tom Brady came out after the game and essentially was saying, I don't know what happened. I I hope he's okay because, I mean, that's that's something that none of us have ever – we've seen almost everything. The NFL definitely surprises you from time to time. We've never seen anything like this with a player. Hope he is in a good – Headspace. Hope he's that done. he has. Hope that he's cool with his decision, because he's he's. It's done. The it's NFL a, career of Antonio Brown is over. It is a final decision. Like if I have him on a dynasty roster, I am not worried about moving on. I cannot fathom him ever getting a job. He's not a, uh, you know, a young guy either. Right. So he's already at the end of the career, and nobody could ever sign him after he walks off on a yeah. team in the middle of an important game where you were down and and really necessary to your team so that was crazy he has been released um by the bucks and speaking of the bucks and this was probably this the most devastating thing that happened to people this weekend ronald jones is has to be ronald mcdonald jones has to be yeah one of the most hated players from this weekend because so many people picked up and played ronald jones um we recommended it 
He was in a fantastic spot. But unfortunately, he suffered an ankle injury uh, pretty early against the Jets and gave you nothing. And, yeah. and, and it stinks because I, I think if he doesn't get that ankle injury, he probably goes on to have a phenomenal game. I would agree with that. Michael Carter of the Jets also, uh, he left with a concussion. And after, I mean, he ripped off a huge 55-yard run. He looked like he was – he had juice. Like, he mm -hmm. was ready for a big game. Unfortunately, he left early. Uh, Joe Burrow, which holy freaking crap. Joe Burrow, uh, <laughs> I was wrong. Yeah, I mean, we, we were not – we thought – I thought the, I thought the Chiefs would be able to handle Joe Burrow. I thought that that was a one-off against the Baltimore Ravens. And no, and now Joe Burrow is the first quarterback ever with back-to-back -back 404 uh, games. But it's but if you miss the end of it, he did leave. Uh, he tweaked his knee. He was dancing like he was okay in the locker room. Yeah, I, I don't think it's going to be a long-term uh, issue. And obviously, for fantasy purposes, most people the season is done now. Um, but they, they, the Bengals did win the division. We'll know more soon, but it's cer certainly something you want to keep an eye on. The, the good news is it was the other knee. The, the one right. he was grabbing was not his surgically repaired knee from this offseason. Uh, Damien Harris had a hamstring injury uh, as well. Maybe that's why he was pulled I, off. But I did not realize that. I know that if you we played against Damien Harris. Well, he's. I mean, if you remember, he's had a hamstring issue for several weeks now. I assumed that because they were up so much, they were just resting him because of the hamstring issue. But I did not realize that he injured his hamstring. Um, man, that Damian Harris is another one of those like Ronald Jones type players where a lot of people in their championship games had Damian Harris, and so you were either facing him or you had him. I mean, he came through with a with a very big game. Yeah, but you know what? I mean, we yeah. he had seven in our scoring format. He had seventeen points in the first quarter, and it was like, oh my gosh, he's about to do what he just did: go the triple touchdown game again and dominate the face of uh, the the earth. And then he was done for the game. Yeah, it considering eighteen what, points, considering what backup Ramondre Stevenson then went on to do, which is outscore Damian Harris. I can understand feeling a bit burnt, but he at least gave you something. Kyle Pitts. The rookie tight end, he went over a thousand. I mean, the 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 first tight end to go over a thousand yards since Mike Ditka did it, albeit in a couple extra games, still has a chance to break the record. But he had a hamstring injury, and by the end of that game, it was he was hobbling, man. Mm -hmm. He looked like he was in a bad way. <sighs> Devastating news here: Michael Gallup tore his ACL. He tore it on a uh, on a touchdown reception. He was heading into free agency. This one really sucks. Michael Gallup is a very good player. Felt like he was going to get the bag uh, this offseason, and now it's going to be an uphill climb for him to uh, recover from the ACL tear. Ricky Seals-Jones had a just an absolute fluky injury where uh, he was flying out the, the side of the end zone and receives a target. Ends up running into a camera, hits the wall. Had to get carted off with a neck injury, uh, so hopefully that hopefully he is okay. Oh, this is news to me. Ian Rappaport is saying that the Packers are likely to place the franchise tag onto Devontae Adams. I mean, totally, <laughs> it, it makes sense. If I'm running the Packers, I am doing this as well. The question of the offseason will be, of course, what does Aaron Rodgers do? Do they trade him? Doesn't it seem like they're gonna? Just tuck their tail and offer him whatever they he wants. They have. To, I mean, if I'm the Packers, yes. But it just seems like you, you, you are not allowed choice in this situation. You should, you should have to go to Aaron Rodgers and say how many years and how many dollars. <laughs> you let us know, and we will write it and we will sign it. He is. I mean, this is. He'll be the. He's likely to be the MVP again, back to back. <laughs> so, so you, you draft. You move up to draft his replacement in the first love. You draft Jordan Love when Aaron Rodgers has made it known that he would like some assistance at the wide receiver position or just anywhere, a usable player for mm -hmm. the team. You draft Jordan Love, you trade up, and then he responds by giving you for sure one MVP year, 
probably the front runner for this year. I mean, it, it could be Bray, it could be a couple guys, but Aaron Rodgers is at the top. I mean, I <laughs> whoops, yeah, whoops. Well, I mean, you could say whoops, but I think that they are one of the odds-on favorites for the Super Bowl this year. They clinched the number one seed. Of course. So now they have next week to get healthy. They have then the bye. They have two weeks off before you're going to really see them play meaningful football. And they've got a handful of injured players. Um, you know, they've been they've been awesome, and they've been down their two best defensive players who I would expect two weeks from now you might have back. Right. Uh, and then in news... From the Fantasy Footballers HQ, Kyle the Borgogan oh! is here on microphone. Kyle, did you win your championship? I'm dead. Oh, <laughs> the first words ever from the Borgogan on our podcast are, I'm dead. But we are extremely excited to have the Borgogan in-house. Going to be doing a lot of lever pulling, a lot of button pushing, a lot of heavy manual labor he doesn't oh, know yeah. about that part no he, he's unaware of uh we, we put the, a lot the of, sandbags mm -hmm. that he just has to move for no reason yeah well it's we, part of the contract yeah i mean it's also a great workout so people think like oh i want to work for the fantasy footballers what you don't realize is that every employee every day has 20 50 pound bags mm -hmm. to move mm -hmm. they have to move it to the same spot <laughs> from where it was but around the building that was today's news and notes presented by sleeper the leader in breaking news alerts download the sleeper app Join their Breaking Alerts channel. It is faster than every other source. It's time to celebrate some studs. This week's Fantasy Stud Muffins. Joseph Burrow. Joseph Burrow, 446 and 4. Or as I like to call him, Joseph Enchilada. <laughs> this week, it was no Burrow. That was a full enchilada because the dude's great and we benched him. Thank you. Um, I'll be yes. here all day. Yeah, for, and for I, – I cannot fall at the feet uh, more than we already have of I thought Burrow was not in line to do this, and we we played Kyler Murray mm -hmm. in our championship matchup over Joe Burrow, and Joe Burrow gave us a, an obscene gesture, yeah. <laughs> told us we're stupid, and put up 404 yet again. Uh, a lot of the defense – Simply not covering Jamar Chase. I don't know what kind of Houdini magic was going on out there for, for Jamar, but monster game. Russell Wilson. Russell. Russell Wilson. 230 passing yards, but four touchdowns, including a the old good old fashioned tap pass. I didn't really do anything, but I got a passing touchdown. Uh but it was, you know, it's it's good to see him. What what was his actual total passing yards? Did I read it right? Um, 200, I, okay, 236 yeah. yards. Okay, yeah. So 236 passing yards. Actually um, finally ran for a while. He, he hasn't sure. been running. Added 24 rushing yards. You know, this wasn't a – this wasn't a – outside of Burrow. Burrow was awesome. But outside of him, this wasn't, I think, one of the most massive quarterback blow-up performances. Like, there's a lot of guys that were very, very good, but they weren't out there – just completely winning your week uh, outside of Burrow. Yes, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it was Burrow, and then a lot of guys were clumped together, uh, including the Plant Man. Which, which I mean, I, uh, real quick on that Seattle game, that game was insane. Like there was so many points put up. That game was just absolute madness from start to finish. Tom Brady against the Jets, four hundred and three. Didn't feel like it was going to happen. It didn't and feel like it happened. <laughs> like I came in this morning and was shocked. With where he ranked on the day, he was down all of his weapons. He was down all game. It looked like the Buccaneers were going to lose to the Jets. Like, with two minutes left, yes. it was – they, they were, were going to lose. They were down, like, 14 yeah. towards the end of the game. And then, and they, then at the end, they were down another wide receiver who retired mid-game. And um, yeah. Tom Brady is the GOAT, and he brought him back. And if you had started him, congratulations. Yeah, he is just under 5,000. Yards on the season, 40 passing touchdowns, and another incredible season for the plant man. Dak Prescott came through, 220 and three, ran a little bit. Kyler in the exact same game. I mean, this is what we're saying of the quarterbacks were not fantastic this week, but because Kyler Murray is in this list, 260 passing yards, 
two touchdowns, yeah, forty-four meh. yards on the ground. He was he was okay. In fact, if you I mean if you watch that game, Dak and Kyler against each other, I think both played bad football. Like neither one impressed me. There were a right. lot of bad throws. Kyler was okay. I was glad to see a couple more designed runs for him. I don't know if that's just because James Conner was gone, but yeah, I mean this is currently um, the quarterback four and five on the week, and they were they were fine. They were they were good, but they weren't they weren't anything special. You want to know who was special for for who he is? Who's that? <laughs> was Mac Jones. Yes. Mac Jones balled out. He played fantastic. Uh, 22 of 30, 220 passing yards, three passing touchdowns. <laughs> they just – they embarrassed the Jacksonville Jaguars. You mean f when they scored 50 points? Yeah, that's what I mean. You know who played terrible? Josh Allen. Josh Allen played <laughs> – horrific football he completed 11 of 26 passes i understand it was snowing and whatever three but this interceptions is, this is the atlanta falcons you complete 11 of 26 passes you throw three interceptions but because we play fantasy football and not real life football he carried the ball 15 times 81 rushing yards two rushing touchdowns that turns into a, a spectacular game he's the quarterback seven on the week so he is he is in the studs section. Right. He eleven for twenty six, one hundred and twenty yards, and three interceptions. But he is a stud. What a world! Aaron Rodgers thankfully did enough as the the Packers just shellacked a Vikings team that could get absolutely nothing done. And then my guy, we made it in. It we had a we had a bit of a sweat. Oh we yeah, had, we had a bit of a sweat here for Trey Lance. About two hundred fifty passing yards, two touchdowns. Ran a little bit was one Brandon Ayuk holding call away from uh, Being the a, rushing, four. a rushing touchdown, which would have taken him from a good game to a, just an absolute smash of yeah, a week. Currently the, the quarterback 10. I know a lot of people like mid-game around halftime were tweeting like, oh, oh I, thanks, yes. thanks for Trey Lance. You gotta let you gotta let four. They get four quarters. Yeah, they get four quarters to score points. You gotta let players finish the game, and he ended up uh, having a good game. And in fact, if you look at the downfield passing, like the next yes, gen stats, yes. he was actually very good. And it was he was not really opened up and allowed to do that in the beginning of the game. And then once they were like, okay, let's try using your arm, he actually had you know a better yards per attempt than than San Francisco quarterbacks have had. In the last couple of years, so the the future looks bright. And again, for those week eighteeners, um, it Garoppolo is Garoppolo's well, not going to like. They're, I, they're, I don't. They're think saying he might play, but they, they said, said he was going to play this last <laughs> week too. He's not. Trey Lance is playing this week. Trey Lance is playing in the playoffs. That's how I think it's going to happen. Um, but you should be able to. You should be able to start him. Which and then and I'll say this: uh, use social media responsibly. If you're going to come at me at <laughs> halftime and say that a player hasn't done anything, remember there is a second half of the game. Because mm -hmm. you, you can get got back. Yes. I mean, I will never hear anything you said again because you were muted because <laughs> <laughs> it was halftime. If it's the end of the game, I understand. It comes with the job. People could be upset. And if Trey Lance had poo-pooed, I would have been really, oh, really. Oh, man, you'd be living in a hole, in a cave right yes, now. Yes, that would have. Oh, I don't even want to think about that, but he came through, and it was an okay game. Uh, but also, halftime. Don't tweet at halftime, people. Don't victory lap at halftime. Tweet, tweet your frustration to your Sure. I mean, like, sure. there's so many times I'm like, come on, <laughs> get, get it, your act together. Uh, before we move into the running back studs of the week, want to thank today's sponsor, Head & Shoulders, Jason. Mm. Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield Technology is never, never not – Working to give you up to <laughs> to give you up to one hundred percent dandruff protection even between the washes. That's what they mean. It's never not working. You know, like I washed my hair today. I didn't wash it the next day. But you know it's, who's you know who's working? Head and shoulders. Yeah, it's not just working when it's on your fingertips, suds, and and then it's done. Yeah, you no. don't just you don't wash out the work. No. It's, it's never not working. It's not washed. It's never not working. Regular use of head and shoulder scalp shield technology provides a continuous, invisible shield of protection against dandruff, itch, dryness, and it renews that protection with every wash. Their scalp shield, it works day and night to protect you against the flakes. Long-term sponsor of this show, the sponsor of our Never Not Working segment uh, throughout this, this campaign, which has been 
Uh, incredibly fun doing those deep dives, you know, giving you those just those those nuggets that are buried deep within the earth. We extract them because mm-hmm. we are also never not working. Get up to 100% dandruff protection. That's never not working with Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield technology available at walmart.com. And if you've ever wanted to make your home feel safer, there is no better time than now with Simply Safe. Right now, our friends at Simply Safe, they're giving the Foot Clan access to the New Year's holiday deals. That's 20% off their award winning home security. And your first month is free when you sign up for the interactive monitoring service. We love Simply Safe. It is very, very, very easy. It's straightforward. It makes sense. It's reliable. They have indoor, outdoor cameras, comprehensive sensors. Uh, they have the monitoring round the clock by trained professionals to give you help the instant that you need it. They were named the best home security system of 2021 by U.S. News and World Report. You go online, you customize what you need, you even get free recommendations, and there's no long-term contracts like the olden days of home security. It really is the easiest way to start feeling more peaceful during the new year. And if you hurry, you could take 20% off your Simply Safe system and your first month free. When you sign up for the interactive monitoring service, visit simplysafe.com slash footballers. Again, that is simplysafe.com slash footballers for 20% off your entire system. Before we move into the running backs, I want to address the uh, the giant bear in the room. <laughs> Jay Grizz, cardboard bear <laughs> extraordinaire. He is a bear in the room. That is, <laughs> Yeah, he's going to be here. We Andy is out for the week. He is celebrating some time with his family. It is not... Uh, that he tucked tail because he lost the championship. This was already on the schedule the, that he was. He's not going to be here. Yeah, I'm happy for him and a little bit for us because I feel like if he was <laughs> He would have been a hurricane. If he was in today, <laughs> man, I don't know how you take that loss of going in to Sunday Night Football, just needing a little bit from Dalvin Cook Dalvin and getting Cook. a little bit less and not winning. There are, I mean, there's a lot of people on both sides of that. Dalvin Cook was... A real game changer last yeah. night. You're either facing him or you had him. Um, we'll get to them. Hopefully, who you really had was my guy Rashad Penny, baby. Jason started the week. Rashad Penny. I mean, I, I, I don't even. I don't know what Seattle does at this point. Twenty five carries, 170 rushing yards, two touchdowns, caught two of his three targets. Uh, what is his future? I don't. They didn't pick up his fifth year contract, which I don't blame him. Rashad you could Penny, not have picked up his fifth year. He has been a catastrophic bust yes. of a first round running back. Just hurt the entire time. Finally healthy, and not just healthy and getting an opportunity, thriving, dominating. He's still at the age where he has something left to give an NFL franchise. Very intrigued to see what happens with Penny. Does Seattle bring him back? Does he find a starting job somewhere else? And it's crazy. The, the last thing I'll say, but I will say this about Penny. Every time he stand, I message you guys in Slack. Every time I watch Rashad Penny stand up, <laughs> yeah. it feels like this is the most difficult task he's ever accomplished in his entire life. Yeah, like he looks like he just got he, he was just flung from a car in a in a wreck. And he's trying to stand up, and it's everything in his body hurts, and he's just it's slow. Someone has to help him. He gives it all on the field, Mike. You know, when he when he runs, he runs with one hundred percent effort. He looks fantastic. Like he's he's very large, but shift shifty. This is why I loved him coming yes, out of college. Like, he was one of my favorite guys that year. I I mean, if I go back and look at my notes on scouting him, he was. My darling, I loved him, but he's been injured his whole career, but it's his size and speed combination. When you're that big and strong and you are, you know, that fast, it's really difficult on NFL players, but he's never been given the chance because of his body. Mm -hmm. Um, However, this year for fantasy football, he could very well be the biggest hero. Like, you know, we talk about who's the best waiver wire pickup of the year. Well, Elijah Mitchell, you got him early, you got a lot, but then he kind of disappeared. And hopefully, if you held on to him, look, yeah. he was great as well this week. Um, but when you picked up Rashad Penny a month ago, I know for our team that just won a championship, it was on the back of Rashad Penny. The last month, the last four weeks, Rashad Penny. He's got to be the, the RB1. Yeah. Running back one. He's the number one running back in fantasy football over the last month, and it's the most important month 
of the season. So he has brought a lot of uh, swag. In fact, don't forget, you can go to fantasychamps.com. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Which, yes, Jason, we need to pick up some uh, rings. Thank you for reminding me. Yes, use the code free ring at fantasychamps.com. If you add a trophy or a belt uh, and a championship ring, you know, those $60 bling like Super Bowl rings, you can get that for free with the code free ring. I've got, I will a, be I've doing got that. a few of them, Jason. Oh, I know. We've and got them all over. We're going to get one more. You done one for each? <laughs> That's right. Uh, Daryl Williams, 88 yards and two tutties. And the, I, I feel like we were having some spirited debates throughout the show of, uh, last week, do you go Daryl Williams? Do you go Rashad Penny? And the answer was uh, good and better. Yeah, I mean the answer was Penny, but at the same time, Daryl Williams was still fantastic. Yeah. Another uh, storyline here: Devin Singletary wrecks the Atlanta Falcons. Was given twenty three carries, one hundred and ten yards, two rushing touchdowns. They have made him the guy. He's the dude in three straight weeks. What is his dynasty outlook? Because after his rookie year, he was definitely somebody, a young player that that teams were going after. They reward that solid rookie year with, no, we're going to draft Zach Moss in the third round, and we're going to put you in a timeshare where no one has any value to this team. And now this last month of the season, they have gone all in on Devin Singletary. He's very young. He's 24 years old. He will be very exciting to watch, and I'm sure we'll be talking about him over the offseason. Before, before this week, he was the running back six over the last month, same time frame. So I would imagine he might jump up to be the second best running back in fantasy over the last month. Now, his dynasty outlook, to me, really truly depends on what happens with the Bills. If they stick with this and they go deep into the playoffs, they might just make him the dude. However, what they've done all season and really over the last two years with him is they've just been searching for some answer, and hopefully they feel they've found it. But I do think that going in the draft, they know that Zach Moss is what we've always known he is, which is a bum. Um, <laughs> we have. We never liked Zach Moss oh, because man. he's not good. Um, and then, uh, you know, Matt Breida, they're going to add somebody. But I hope sure. I hope they can go and, like, win the Super Bowl and have Devin Singletary be the guy and then just say he's our, he's our guy going forward. That will be very exciting uh, to see what we have to say about him in the Dynasty Pass, which will – I mean, it's that time. It is dyna- real rookie dynasty time, and that'll be available in just a month. That's a little teaser there. The New England Patriots running backs, both of them had monster days. Uh, Ramondre is very good. Harris is very good. Four rushing touchdowns. Boston Scott, two rushing touchdowns was the guy. Now, it was this is – Boston Scott, to me, this is the epitome of watch the news till the last – possible minute because we had we just didn't know we could speculate all last week is Jordan Howard going to be the guy he's dealing with a stinger he has been the guy for them before when Miles Sanders is out it's like I think I'd play Howard you guys were kind of on the Scott side of the argument and then 30 minutes before kickoff we got a report from boots on the ground saying Boston Scott is warming up with the ones he is going to be the starter my rankings were then adjusted, and like Sunday Live was done, but I mean this was right up to the wire of mm-hmm. he's the guy, he's the starter, he's going to get work. Hope- he he needs to be moved into your lineup. Yeah, hopefully you saw that if you needed a nudge. I I, I know I was I was pro Boston Scott whether or not uh, Howard started, and you know he he's a talented player. Like sure. Boston Scott has never been given the opportunity and looked bad, and and Jordan Howard is what he is he's, he's yeah he's serviceable sure um reliable guy to go get you you know a couple of yards move the chains um but he's not going to be your fantasy force yeah but boston scott came through oh yeah aj Dillon, your start of the week good, thank you good but call. the the giant icicle ice cube i don't know what we want to what we landed on ice calling him sculpture let's call him that because uh, he is the dude's a sculpture that dude is a hulk of a man. Incredible running back. Uh, came through with the two rushing touchdowns. They went to him in the second half. I think he ended up outscoring Aaron Jones uh, in that matchup. Yes, he definitely did. Uh, Aaron Jones was pretty pretty far behind A.J. Dillon by the end of that. I mean, two rushing touchdowns will do that, which David Montgomery also got two rushing, rushing touchdowns. Sure. Jay Grizz, super happy about that. <laughs> Yeah, sure. Thank you. Uh, Elijah Mitchell, if you held on to him 
for the long haul of the injury. You were rewarded with over 100 rushing yards, a receiving touchdown. Deonta Foreman. So this was one of the more surprising things, not not just Foreman, but the Titans against the Miami Dolphins. The Dolphins were on that, what, seven-game win streak, just surging, looking like a team that was really going to be a force. They're going to sneak into the playoffs after a terrible start. And then the Titans. Dude, the Tennessee Titans, man. Number my, one in the AFC right now. They can lock up the bye week. The Titans can lock up the bye week. Mike Vrabel is not given enough credit. He is an otherworldly coach. Um, you know, it's it's there are there are so many different aspects to coaching. You know, Andy Reid is such an incredible schemer and such a bad in game. Andy Reid did a lot of clown show stuff this yes, week. That's so. what I mean. Like like he makes a lot of buffoon. Uh, headed, you know, but Vrabel, Vrabel knows every aspect of ev he he is as involved on the defense as the offense as the special teams as anyone. His in game management is excellent. His love from the players is, you know, no, nobody doesn't like Vrabel, and I don't think they have that talented of a roster. They certainly don't have that deep of a roster for what they're doing. And every week they are just so great at football. And um, and I love to see Deonta Foreman doing this. There's another one of those guys yeah. that I loved. It was a little bit of a redemption tour for for some of these running backs that we like. But like losing Derrick Henry is for that particular team is the equivalent of most teams losing their quarterback because he was the identity of the team. He was the offense. So incredible work by the Tennessee if, Titans. If they get the bye week, which is yeah, they could uh, I mean, get right, Henry right, back. Right now, they're they're there. Uh, if, if they get the bye week and they get Derrick Henry back going into the Super Bowl run, yeah, watch out. Uh, yeah, so Foreman, great game. Austin Eckler did come through uh, on limited work with a with a pretty big game. Kamara, whoo, that was a sweat. Uh, if you played Alvin Kamara, it was pretty bad until the receiving touchdown. Oh, oh these four players right here. Yeah. <laughs> These four players we're going to talk about, they're very exciting. Here's the four. Alvin Kamara, uh -huh. Jarrett Patterson, Jonathan Taylor, okay. and Sony Michelle. Now, all... which, which two names <laughs> don't belong? Well, Jarrett Patterson and Sony Michelle aren't quite Alvin Kamara and Jonathan Taylor. Um, we had two of these players, <laughs> and we faced two of these players in our championship matchup. We were going up against Jonathan Taylor and Alvin Kamara, uh -huh. and we had Sony Michelle and Jarrett Patterson. And they washed them out. They scored the same. Jarrett Patterson, 12 for 57 and a touchdown. And the touchdown was immediate. It was – so if you had the hardest – was the first touchdown of the day, wasn't he? Uh, Might have been. First or second. Uh, but the if you had the heart of stone to play Jarrett Patterson, he cashed immediately with the touchdown. And then at the end of the game, they were doing all the checkdowns to him. He got 5 for 41 through the air. Jonathan Taylor – Still a, a 20 carries, over 100 yards, a rushing touchdown. I think it's fair to be disappointed, even though like he had 100 it's, rushing yards and a touchdown, and it yeah. feels like he It's really not fair, but it. it's fair. He's so good, man. Yeah. You just watch every run. is like like they, they should do what they do with Derrick Henry and stop saying, like, we're going to give him 20. Give him 40. And then Sony Michelle came through with the rushing touchdown. Pretty big game on the ground. At the wide receiver position, Jamar Chase – 11 for 266 and 3. What? He, Thank you. <laughs> it, it was um he was he is unstoppable. He had seven more receiving yards than Patrick Mahomes had passing yards. What? Yeah, thank you. Um I mean, there there aren't enough superlatives to no. say about Jamar Chase and uh, and so much of this is him like Burrow played great and, yes. and I don't want to take anything away from Burrow I'm so excited I love Joe Burrow we've got him on our dynasty league I, I can't wait for an incredible career but I mean there's just it's not opinion it's fact when you throw the ball to Jamar Chase you know in the middle of the field and he's you know it's a nice little it's like where Tyler Boyd would have been tackled sure and then it's a 70 yard touchdown because nobody can touch Jamar Chase um he was just absolutely uh, phenomenal and you know he had this kind of lull in the middle of the season 
Yeah. But it's really nice that come championship week, this guy who started off – I mean, I was obviously beyond wrong. I, I thought spending a fifth-round pick on a rookie wide receiver, what he would have to do to you know, sure. return on investment uh -huh. would have to be something in, insane. And he didn't just – I mean, he blew that away. He might have been the best pick in the fifth round. That's in, He is insane. And if you have him in a dynasty league, can you imagine how happy you are? You have a, I am very happy. <laughs> you have a decade of dominance uh, barring any kind of catastrophic injury. Imagine drafting Travis Etienne over Jamar Chase. <laughs> Thanks Daniel. Oh. Uh Amon Ross St. Brown. This dude. Oh man. This dude. Holy crap. I'm like Jamar Chase, you kind of expect him to have a big game. Amon Ross St. Brown has gone nuclear over the the final stretch of the season. Eight for one eleven with a touchdown. Had a rushing touchdown. Was doing this with Tim Boyle. Like he is so impressive. And moving forward with him on a dynasty team, you got to be very happy as well. I mean, he 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 has done everything you could dream of for. Wait, a is this uh, Amon Ra? Literally means the sun god. Oh yeah, like the sun well, god, well, like Ra. This, I, I like, don't know if it's Amon Ra, but obviously Ra is the sun yeah, god. Yeah, I mean, th what an awesome name. And this dude just, oh, man. You don't, you want to know what scares me? Like, going forward, he has established himself as, uh, you know, the the a building block for the Lions. Like, sure. they are going to build upon his foundation as they should. They got a special a talent. fourth round pick. He got a special talent, great pick, and he has, he has shown that he belongs and he can dominate. But going into next year, like I will have the Brandon Ayuk fears. Brandon Ayuk Fair. torched the world the second half of his rookie season. Was you know the uh, you know the, the number one guy by a country mile in that stretch for rookies and uh, okay. And let well, to try and be a little bit balanced here. Let me read something off to you: the stretch run, Minnesota. Denver, which eight for seventy three against Denver is very good. That's good. But Minnesota, Arizona, Atlanta, Seattle. It's this is, not a murderer's row. No, no, it is definitely not. But I don't want to try and take anything away from what he has done. It's been fantastic. DK Metcalf. Hey, there you he are. He caught six passes, and three of them were touchdowns. So welcome back. Devontae Adams, whole hum has a monster game yet again. Braxton Berrios. Uh, Kyle, do you want to jump in here on Braxton Berrios and give your uh, give your analysis? He haunts me. Uh, for the listeners, Braxton Berrios <laughs> was in Kyle the Borgogans championship lineup, and then he removed him right before the game for uh, Cortland Sutton, and then it was no longer a championship lineup. Yeah, and he plays for the Jets. If you don't know who Braxton Berrios is. He will be interesting to pay attention to. He's real shifty. But that's not something. Like, people aren't – you're not going to chase this, right? No, no, I'm talking about just longer – this isn't the first time Braxton Berrios has done something this year. And, like, he'll be am overlooked. I, so am I wrong to not give two farts about Braxton Berrios? I like, think you are wrong. Because I, I don't care. Not this year against Buffalo, but you realize that this is now three straight weeks as a top 24 wide receiver. And one was against Miami – one was against Jacksonville, and, and this last one against Tampa Bay. I don't know. It's okay. an impressive run here. Uh, Cooper Cup also had a good game. Jacoby Myers caught a touchdown. Good for you. And, oh, we, we of course, have to mention Zay Jones, Jason. <laughs> Zay Jones, 10 targets, 8 for 120, a career day for Zay Jones. Yeah. You want I, to yeah, I made the decision. <laughs> Um, it, it was tough, uh, but I made the decision to start Keyshawn Vaughn over Zay Jones um, in uh, defiance uh, of of your opinion, and you were right, but it don't matter because we still won. It did not matter at the tight end position. Freaking Noah Fant, of course. Of course, because the process is there. Against the Chargers, they they just bleed points to the tight end position. I believe the last time these two played, I went with Noah Fant. Is like he's my start of the week. I think he's going to be great because the matchup is there, and he just pfft, nothing. And then of course, he finally comes through. I don't know how many lineups he was in, but Noah Fant, great game, ninety two yards and touchdown. Gronk, Gronk, Gronk. Andy's start of the week. He absolutely came through here, 
And double then, digit targets. And then the, the big guys, Andrews, Kelsey, Goddard, they all had pretty good games. But then Tyler Higby. Thanks, Higby. <laughs> Where was this the rest of the year? Yeah, I mean this was this was pretty nice. Uh you know, nine six, targets, six, six for sixty nine. Yep. Yep. And um yeah, it was it, I think he was more relevant for DFS lineups. He was good value. That was his highest yardage total of the season. Yeah, but I, I doubt many championship lineups were playing Tyler Higby. All right. I tried to spend some extra time really celebrating the players who took on the championships. But, of course, mm -hmm. there is the other side of the coin. So it's got to be done. We must all grieve together and place the blame where, where it belongs. Pooped in his big boy pants. Uh, Tua and the the entire Miami Dolphins, or as a pun that I liked, but we, it didn't make the cut. It was uh, the Miami, Miami Golfins, as in that whole team is going golfing because they were eliminated from the playoffs, and it was just a bad game overall. Yeah, they scored three points, and Jalen Waddell was relied on by a lot of people. Yeah. He let you down. Uh, Tua's matchup against Tennessee's secondary looked great, so he was a streaming option for a lot of people out there, and he definitely let you down. But I think the quarterback – there were two quarterbacks that really, 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 really yep. hurt you. Yep. Um, one, of, one of them was aptly named Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts has not, – And not that he was bad. No, he was, he was fine. Uh, 214 passing yards. 44 rushing yards. It just so happened that all of the touchdowns – were running touchdowns. Boston Scott rushed him in, and um, if you had just tap past him in, right. then Jalen Hurts would have had a great game. But unfortunately, and he is a, one of those quarterbacks that helped get you there. Like, oh yeah, a lot of people in championships with Jalen Hurts because he was so consistent. He only had one bad game the entire rest of the season, um, and then he his second bad game came uh, championship week. It's it's devastating. Matthew Stafford in a juicy the juiciest matchup of the weekend against the Baltimore Ravens secondary he threw for over 300 yards and two touchdowns but he also threw two interceptions uh he let everybody down I mean yeah. I, we I think we all thought he was gonna I thought he was a smash play the matchup was great the weapons that he's got there and and like you said 302 that's that's solid. Yeah, I mean, you'd be happy with that. But when you throw the picks, and he's been throwing a ton of picks, and he one has. of them was a pick six. I can't believe they came back and won this game. That's so upsetting. Um, but, <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I think a lot of people lost with Matthew Stafford. We got we got to go full music for this one. Dalvin Cook. Oh, my goodness. Nine carries, 13 rushing yards. Three receptions for zero yards. The news came out that he was going to be available and active. Because and he was off the COVID list. Because he was yep. off the COVID list. Yep. The celebrations that came from Andy and I'm sure all Dalvin Cook managers. Certainly. Were, I'll bet if you look at your bench, you had someone that scored a whole lot more than Dalvin Cook. Because Dalvin Cook scored nothing. He had nine carries for 13 yards. Brew Tal. Right alongside him, though, DeAndre Swift, four for 32, two receptions for seven yards. That is called, uh, that's the showcase. Just when I was starting to love <laughs> Dan oh, no. Campbell. Oh, no. Dude, Guns Mahoney, <laughs> you screwed so many people over here because – you said you were going to unleash him. You were going to give him all the work he could handle. You were going to – you don't come out and say those things and then have him get four carries, which he had 32 yards on four carries. You want to know why? Because he's great. There were so many times they were down around the goal line, and it was like, why aren't – just give it – just give it Swift. He'll score a touchdown. Swift looked great, but you didn't give him the ball, which is fine. First game back from injury. Sure. Just don't come out, and for no reason, nobody's telling you that you have to say these things that you're gonna get him the ball a ton and make sure. I mean, had he not had Dan Campbell not said those things, I think most fantasy managers would not have put DeAndre Swift in their lineup. You, I wouldn't have put him in our in my draft game. Definitely lineup. would have been scared. It was one hundred percent based on what Dan Campbell said. <laughs> Brooks says more like guns baloney. Oh, <laughs> baby. <laughs> now, that's how you roast someone on this show, Brooks. 
Guns Baloney. Oh, uh, Cordero Patterson against the Buffalo Bills, who have been uh, a matchup to take advantage of the at the running back position. This one you could see coming, though. Yeah. Because he has not been very involved. Um, all of his utilization the first part of the year really has gone away. The previous two weeks, he had two targets in each of those games. Um, Andy was really struggling with, do I start Cordero or not? The matchup is good, but he's not been involved. And, and I think, you know, most managers were looking at other options that appeared better than Cordero. So hopefully you didn't start him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I figured, I mean, at the halfway point, the waiver wire pickup of the, of the year, it was locked up. It was going to be Patterson. We'll see. We'll we'll, yeah, see, we'll see how people are feeling about uh, him, which I'm referring to the footies episodes, which will be coming up uh, in the next few weeks where we celebrate and we give out the most prestigious award, not just in fantasy, not just in sports, not just in entertainment, but it's the greatest. Uh, all medium. It's the <laughs> All media. All, Thank you. all mediums. Um, Thank you. This is the greatest. It's the highest honor yeah. anyone could ever receive. You are waiting to hear. That your footy is in the mail. Like, I have uh, – my my inbox is just stuffed with Nobel Prize winners, and it's them just being upset and uh, ashamed of their career choices because they know they may have this Nobel thing, mm -hmm. whatever. They'll never get a footy. Nobel sh <laughs> Um Thank The you. amount of bribes, <laughs> you know, cash left under my – yeah, Matt's just like, please. I mean, I'm very grateful. I'll take it all. Uh, we do accept bribes. That is something really important and unique about us. <laughs> we openly and actively let you know you can buy your way to these prestigious awards. Uh, Zeke. Whoops. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. He has bottomed out. Um, uh -oh. Nine for 16 rushing, two targets for one reception of 14 yards. That was not good. He's going to be an interesting name. Uh, for the Truth Series coming up um, in the next few weeks, we'll take a look and, and really look at his future outlook. Um, I know I felt bad about my trade for a while with Andy in our Dynasty League. Sure. Uh, trading away Zeke, but getting Mark Andrews in a first. Seems I fantastic now. Feel pretty good. Seems fantastic. Uh, Mel Vonte, the combination of Gordon and Javante Williams in a great matchup. They, the two of them combined for 73 rushing yards and 31 receiving yards, except that was split into two players. So the Broncos have – They stunk. The Broncos have imploded. The Broncos look like a really strong team about to peak, and then all of a sudden the last three weeks they have – Like they felt like they were locked, you know? Right. And then – then uh, they got locked. <laughs> Drew locked. Um, but even before it was locked – uh, I mean, this is three weeks in a row, three losses. Here's their points put up in those losses. 10 points, 13 points, 13 points. The team's just falling apart, gone home. They're gone fishing. Um, they're golfing. Uh, also golfing, Antonio Brown, as he moves into his new career, three for 26. That was devastating for fantasy football. Tyreek Hill, six for 40, and that is now – Four of five weeks outside of the top 40. He gave you the number two overall performance against the Chargers in week 15 in that in the crazy week. But other than that, he had, a, he had a deep end zone target where, you know, you just catch that ball and you had a great week. He had 10 targets. So, yeah, not saying that anything for the future is bad, but yeah, that's it's unfortunate. That's really bad variance that hit at the wrong time. A.J. Brown off of the monster return. Uh, returns to two for 41. The Buffalo wide receivers, uh, stink, stink, stonk, mm -hmm. and that was... <laughs> well, it was Josh Allen. I mean, yeah. uh, Dawson Knox sure. was, uh, was a, uh, looked like a smash play. Uh, he was one of the start of the week, and, uh, you know, n nobody, nobody came through because Josh Allen, we told you earlier, Josh Allen's entire line was garbage. You're talking about a player who... You know, through three picks and a total of 120 yards. Split that up between everybody and nobody gets anything. CeeDee Lamb, three for 51. Devastating way to end the season. Uh, T. Higgins, three for 62. I don't know that I can blame him because the Kansas City Chiefs, I think they, they guarded Higgins. 
And for a lot of plays, they just did not guard Jamar Chase. It will, it will be interesting to see what the, what the Bengals actually are because they have, have they have morphed several times throughout the season of what mm-hmm. the offense is. When they drafted Jamar Chase with a top five pick over offensive line help, which that was the big discussion of the draft: will they go O line or will they go Jamar Chase? They took Jamar Chase. And then you're thinking, Joe Burrow's throwing the ball 40-plus times a, a week as a rookie. This is going to be incredible. They turn into a run-first team. Yeah, I mean, the, the after their bye week, before this last week against Baltimore, he was only averaging 29 passing attempts a game. That, you know, And that's kind of what you had expected. Then he had 46, and then this last week, uh, 39 passing attempts against the Kansas City Chiefs. Going forward, are they going to – are they going to try and madden people and just dump 50 points on every opponent? I I think on a long enough timeline, you know, not necessarily the rest of the season, but going into next year, I think this team will 100% not only will they shift, but they will have to shift to a Burrow-centric offense. And for the majority of this year, they've been a Mixon-centric offense. Right. But he's too Burrow's too good to sit back and not let him be the star centerpiece of your franchise. Also in the bust category, you had Justin Jefferson, which Sean Mannion. Not I mean, his fault. Yeah, that that really sucks to have that stolen from you. Jalen Waddell, bad game. And Devontae Parker, 13 targets. Hey. If I told you that Devontae Parker had 13 targets against the Tennessee Titans. I would have said he has at least seven for 70. Yeah, you say, was he, was he a top 15 guy? No, it was an absolute brutal week. Uh, and then, uh, well, I was trying to figure out the math here because Kenny Galladay had zero receptions. Uh, Kenny Galladay, on the season, we have 34 receptions for Kenny Galladay. And Kenny Galladay made $18 million this year. Oh, that's some good. So basically a half a million dollars for every reception. If you so when you think about Kenny Galladay, you think oh. you think about you know he was injured this whole year and he missed the whole year. Except that's just not true. He played thirteen games. You feel like he missed every game because he wasn't there. His thirteen, or, you know, his thirteen game pace extrapolated over an entire season would be forty four receptions for six hundred and fifty yards and no touchdowns. It's as bad as it could be, and they paid a lot of money. DJ Moore and Robbie Anderson both tanked this week. What do the Panthers do at the quarterback position? I have absolutely no idea. Devontae Smith, very disappointing. Three for 54. Just missed on a touchdown opportunity as well. Can't count the ghost points. Three for 54. Bad. At the tight end position, George Kittle. Or, oh, yeah. You know, or George, what did we call him? George Piddle? George Piddle. Uh, uh, he suffered the Trey Lance effect. Only one reception for 29 yards. Dawson Knox. Oh, full ah, goose. Ah, Woof. Ah. Uh, look, tight ends were bad. Foster Moreau, who I thought was in a fantastic spot, he couldn't deal with Zay Jones, the new target hog for the Las Vegas Raiders. You know, Gerald Everett didn't come through. Just a, a lot of busts at the tight end position. Yeah, I mean, hopefully you had uh, Gronk or yeah. obviously one of the the big the the big guys other than Kittle. Um, you know, Andrews right, right, right. and Kelsey they they came through, but yeah, it just wasn't a great week for tight end, which is always comforting. Like whenever you have a bad tight end, sometimes it's fine because everybody had a bad tight end and you faced a bad tight end. So, you know, if it, if you had, you know, George Kittle and you faced Dawson Knox, you're fine. Right. That'll do it for today's show. Just a reminder, if you really want to celebrate that championship like Jason and I will be doing mm-hmm. uh, uh, right after this show, fantasychamps.com. They have all the stuff you want. If you buy a trophy for your league, you can use the code free ring and you'll get a free ring with the purchase of that trophy. Also, um, I'm on my way to purchase uh, the 2021 Foot Clan title shirt. Um, that is there at shopballers.com. And and don't forget, when you win your championship tonight, we want to get that hashtag going. Hashtag yeah. Foot Clan titles. Uh, hashtag Foot Clan title. <laughs> Singular. Um, well, maybe you want a few. Well, sure, but uh, then, but you you don't want to spread the hashtag out. 
All right, and then a quick thank to our sponsor, pristineauction.com, the best sports memorabilia site out there. Right now, a DK Metcalf signed jersey is sitting at just $63. A signed mini helmet from Dak Prescott is sitting at just $77. Pristineauction.com, use the registration code BALLERS. You'll get a $10 credit. That will do it, ladies and gentlemen, only for this episode, though. We will be here the remainder of the week for you true degenerates that are playing your championship week in the final week of the NFL season. And we'll be here next week and the next week and the next week. But I'm saying this week we're, we're still five a week. Next week we'll, we will be shifting to the extended bye week schedule of two shows per week. But this week we'll, get, we'll, we'll hit you with some waivers. We'll let you know who's actually playing for things because that's part of – if you play in the final week of the season, I hope you didn't have Aaron Rodgers – because I don't imagine he will be playing this week. Mm-hmm. Maybe Devonte Adams. I don't know. But we'll figure it out with you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for being with us all season long. We hope that we have helped you win. We hope that we have kept you entertained. We will see you tomorrow, everybody. Good luck tonight. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.